Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where I take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm mocking, giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions. That's important because some of y'all be like, I don't like this pick you made. And I'd be like, this ain't my mock draft. This is me reacting to it. This is me giving my, my perspective. It's important to look at other people's perspectives. Open your head up to the possibilities. Take a bat. Crack the skull. Open your mind. Don't do that. Don't do that. That was a joke. But we're going to be checking out Steve Palzola's uh, mock draft. Hopefully, I didn't butcher his last name too much. But this guy has the best hair in all of NFL podcasting. Legit. Him and Sam Monson have one hell of a podcast. But we're going to check out his mock. And uh, what's crack a lot, kid? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. A lot of Red Bull today. A lot of a lot of recording going on today. I, ha I have a reaction to Mel Kuyper's uh, mock draft tomorrow. By the way, if you're looking for more mock draft content or more draft content, I got... Uh, I got some guy. I got a video on guys. I think they're gonna blow up the combine. I got a video. I got a two round mock that I did with Alex from Hail Mary Sports. Um, I'm hoping sometime this month after the combine that me and uh the, that franchise guy uh, Marcus Whitman, if you don't know him, you should. Uh, hopefully we'll get we'll get together and maybe do a mock draft or do some mock talk and uh, I'm hoping to get back together with Goat House, you know. And I'm looking to be on all these other people's channels, man. Just talking mock. All I want to do is talk draft. But he has the Jacksonville Jaguars going Aiden Hutchinson. Let's see, should I make this bigger? Yeah, I'll make it bigger. So he's going with uh, Aiden Hutchinson here. Listen, this is literally take whoever the top guy is on your board. If it's pass rusher, is it KT? Is it Aiden Hutch? Is it offensive tackle? I imagine it's Evan Neal, but it could be Icky. It could be Charles Cross. Like, really just take the top guy. I don't know about Kyle Hamilton just because of positional value, but I'm really not against the five options I kind of like put forth. So, I like it. And, oh man, we got... Kyle Hamilton go into the Detroit Lions. Safety is usually not in consideration in the top few picks of the draft, but Hamilton has a game-changing playmaking ability. His length and range brings incredible versatility to any defense. By the way, you go check out that interception he had in the season opener against uh, Florida State. Yeah, the dude's got the dude's got range for days. Uh, he ranks in the 90 percentile in forced incompletions compared to recent NFL prospects. That's dope. I love Kyle Hamilton. Um, I think ideally if you're Detroit, you could maybe trade down. But then again, you don't know how high other teams will be on Kyle Hamilton or at least how high they're willing to take him. So, again, I don't mind. if I don't mind this as much. I'd rather take maybe KT here, but I could see in a deep edge class why you would go with Kyle Hamilton. And there are rumbles. A little rumblings of Malik Willis, but I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But by the way, if you're checking out this jersey, you're like, oh, that's dope. Then check this out. Are you tired of spending 80 to 100 bucks on your favorite team's jerseys just to watch those players go to greener pastures? Then check out Team Jersey Pros. They do custom-made shirts, jerseys, and hoodies. And with promo code BROSHMO, all caps, you get 10% off that order. You can get some fine drip for only 30 to 60 bucks, depending on how you want to customize it. You can go with a football jersey, basketball jersey. I personally went with a baseball jersey. Even, even got the logo there. It just looks nice. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. Don't forget promo code BROSHMO. All caps gets you that 10% off. But anyway, back to the video. Yeah, I did that on my phone. If you couldn't tell by the uh, audio and video quality. But uh, yeah, no, dude, they do great work. I love how this jersey came out. And really, it's a great way to support the channel and get some dope merch while you're at it. Gets you 10% off. As you can see, the promo code, I'll list it down below. But yeah, check them out. Let's go ahead and talk about the Texans. Evan Neal 
Going to the Texans. I can't really argue this. Take the best player on your board. I don't think there's much to talk about. They talk about he talks about Laramie Tunzel being on the train block. So yeah, no, Evan Neal makes a ton of sense. KT going to the Jets. Another case. Just take the top. I'm not against taking the top guy on your board. And for a lot of people, arguably, guys like Evan Neal and KT, they're in their top five prospects. So and we know how much Salah loves his pass rush being good all the time. And then the New York Giants, you know this has to be an offensive line in some form, shape, or manner. You got Akem Iguanu, the sticky icky himself. They're going to get DJ some help. Try to try to get a fair evaluation of him. Put, put him in a situation where it's like, okay, let's get a fair assessment of Daniel Jones's talents in a clean pocket how do we do that we gotta get the offensive line to be better so yeah so far so good in this mock i i i like it all right and then charles cross going to the carolina panthers listen the more y'all talk about it because y'all know where i am with this pick in terms of i think this might be a since it's their only pick in the top 100 a do or die that they may go quarterback whether that's a trade whether that's drafting a quarterback here i'm i guess i'm coming back to the around to yes maybe they just go safe they go with their top prospect charles cross would be the top prospect in this scenario i think he's my seventh overall prospect Derek steenley is i have i think at five and then cross is seven so cross fits the criteria they got taylor moton and then a hot lot of nothing quite literally hot lot a nothing so i i got nothing against it and then the new york giants this is their second pick they're going Derek Steenley. There is a... Re okay, he talks about it here. T talks about the Giants can ease him and look into a trade with James Bradbury, who enters the final year's contract. And it's a big cap hit. So, Derek, they, they could entertain the uh, entertain the idea of Derek Steenley at this pick, especially considering a lot of people think Derek Steenley will fall in this class. So, that does make sense to me. And then, wow. Okay, this is the first, I guess I would say the first hot pick in this draft. And it's the Atlanta Falcons going Trent McDuffie over Sauce, which a lot of people like, think Sauce is the top corner in this class. So I like the idea of matching A.J. Terrell with another elite corner from, in terms of uh, athleticism. But maybe NFL NFL's... Uh, the NFL loves size. They're going to love the length and size of a guy like Ahmad Gardner, a guy with extensive man coverage, press man coverage, uh, reps under his belt, who might be more of a Dean Pease type of guy. I feel like Trent McDuffie is kind of the opposite in that regard. Wait, hold up. But McDuffie can slot into... Okay, okay. I, I saw the word slot, so I was thinking... Does it see him as a slot? I do question McDuffie's man skills in terms of he's not really physical during the route. And there are going to be questions about his length. So this is the first pick where I'm like, uh, I don't know. <coughs> oh, excuse <coughs> oh, I'm dying. Oh, because George Karloftis finally get in a little respect, by the way. Sounds like it's up in the air if he decides to work out at the combine or not. He might decide to wait till his pro day because there are questions. This guy needs to test out explosively if he's going to be considered a top 10 uh, prospect, top 10 pick. I got him as a top 10 prospect currently. But again, that might be like we might have to wait on that, man. If He needs to test out well. He really does. Like his game translates well to the NFL, but is he much more than an edge setter? Or is he much more than a guy that's just got a high motor, strong? Is will he test out explosive? Because he lacks length, he lacks bend. So there is there will be questions. There will be questions. But the Broncos go with him here, pairing him up with Chubb and Malik Reed there. So all right. <laughs> 
And then we see Ahmad Gardner go to the Jets. I'm kind of cool if it this goes vice versa where and uh or not Emmons, uh Tremaine McDuff Trent McDuffie. Wow, there we go. Trent McDuffie goes to the Jets and Gardner goes to the Falcons. But I could definitely see the Jets going with defense. You would think maybe they maybe they attack again without free agency. This is kind of like just it, it it it's kind of broad what you think the Jets may or may not do depending on what they do in free agency. They may go with a defensive heavy strategy early on, uh, going KT and then go in Ahmad Gardner. So rather than maybe going tackle, going receiver. So yeah, no, I like I like parent Bryce Hall with somebody. So yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I gotta blow my nose real quick oh excuse me i'm so unprofessional but you could probably tell by the name of the channel how professional we are here all right all right all right all right and then wow still no quarterback off the board we got the uh washington commanders i know some of y'all washington fans are done with the comrade jokes I'm sorry, it's hilarious. But they go Drake London to pair Terry McLaurin with somebody. Um, Deami Brown didn't really like break out, but again, receiver is a, posi- is a position where you don't mind where the receiver room is a bit deep. They do have Curtis Samuel, so he's more of a slot guy anyway. So Drake London, Terry McLaurin, that is a bit scary. You got a guy at 6'5", that's wonderful after the catch, huge catch radius. So, yeah, if they're not sold, maybe they want to spend that second round pick or whatnot on trying to get like a Jimmy G or something. We'll see. We'll see. All right. We got a quarterback off the board, Malik freaking Willis going to the Minnesota Vikings. Listen, Minnesota, if you are in... On all right, Kirk Cousins isn't our quarterback, but hey, he's making a lot of money this year. We're not really gonna move on from him. Let's get a project. Okay, this doesn't feel like the draft to grab a quarterback highly, especially when your defense they're begging for more help at edge rush, they're begging for more help at corner. Um, and depending on uh how Kevin O'Connell sees his wide receiver room maybe they're begging for help at receiver i just don't think this is this is the year the vikings ought to be like you know what we're gonna go malik willis yeah yeah i mean kellen ma's not my guy anyway i mean kellen ma i get it he's a third round pick or was he a second i think he was second i'm not positive i can't remember but maybe he was third i don't know he was in that midday two area but this just isn't the draft where where you're trying to find an upgrade at developmental quarterback. Uh, Cleveland Browns, Garrett Wilson, everyone and their mom makes this pick. And Jarvis Landry, probably going to be a cap casualty. We'll talk about that later in the week when we talk about possible cap casualties uh, for well in the NFL. Uh, be on the look for that video. That's gonna be a lot of fun. I went through and I look looked at what what be what what guys financially make sense to cut. So Tyler Linderbaum going to the Baltimore Ravens. Listen, I know I know I I hear the comment section. Some of y'all are gonna be like, "Yo, listen, Tyler Linderbaum ain't fit. He's like a he, he's probably center only, and you know what?" He's probably only a good fit for a zone-heavy scheme. But this guy, he's strong. Go look up how he manhandled Tristan Wirfs at wrestling. This guy's got strong hands. Don't be sleeping on my boy. Don't be sleeping on my boy. All right, Eagles got the next two picks, so we could go over both of them. Uh, They go Jameson Williams. Listen, it's another deep threat. I think Jalen Hurts, that's probably where he's the most accurate is with his deep ball. Uh, some of y'all will be like, he wasn't that good at throwing the deep ball this year. Listen, that's what he can't like. I'm going back to my prospect evaluation of him. That's where I felt the most confident with him at is throwing a 
nice deep ball. So just because it, it didn't really flash year one where really you had Devontae Smith and then what? Uh, Watkins, who he's fine. He's a, good, he's a good receiver, but you could definitely add talent to the position. And then Devin Lloyd, no secret, one of the worst linebacker crews in all of football is the Philadelphia Eagles. So grabbing Devin Lloyd, who just translates immediately, I think he's going to be a very solid linebacker for years to come. All right. And then the Chargers go Bernhard Ryman. Again, another pick I don't mind because I don't think they're set with, again, Brian Bulaga. I think he ends up being a cap casualty. Storm Norton ain't it, so they need to re they, they need protection on that right side for their investment in Justin Herbert. And then Traylon Burks going to the Saints. I, I do like the idea of them going uh, receiver. I think quarterback could be a possibility here, especially in a quarterback class that's kind of like up for grabs at this point. It's like, uh, who's really the top guy? Is there a top guy? Like, listen, there's decent quarterback, like developmental prospects in this class. I don't really think there's anyone ready to start. You can make a case for maybe Kenny Pickett, but his high end traits aren't so it's like ugh, i don't know but uh yeah not going with Traylon burks they get that deep threat with some size that they thought they had with uh tremaine or tracon smith um marquez calloway kind of flashed a bit last year but nothing special and then the eagles with their last pick david ajabo Again, this guy's going to get drafted based on what teams think he can be, uh, what the potential is. We know the upside. This guy's not going to be someone, at least early on in his career, you can have on the field for all three downs. Just the physicality as a run defender isn't there. So much so Michigan didn't even keep him on the field during uh, rundowns. So, yeah. Uh, Philadelphia or Philadelphia Pittsburgh Steelers they opt also not to go into this quarterback class and they go with Trevor Pennant listen it's no surprise maybe they want to upgrade uh, they started Dan Moore at left tackle last year and you could probably upgrade from that I know Dan Moore was just a rookie but maybe a guy they can move to the right side have him at right tackle uh, Pennant I don't think this is a guy that could start immediately in his career. But if anything, he's like he's gonna be a good run blocker, like right off the bat. Really is, and that really would help Najee Harris. So and they spent a first rounder on Najee, so uh we got Chris Olave going to the New England Patriots. I like this. This is a I think this is better Nelson Aguilar. Uh Alave, we forget how good of a route runner this guy is just because he's got legit burners. He can burn you vertically, but he could also do it underneath. He could also do it in the intermediate. This is a guy that I think could be a very competent uh, number two in the league for years to come. Can he be a number one? Is his ceiling there? Mm, I have my doubts, but I think Chris Olave is still a first round prospect. And then the Las Vegas Raiders go Andrew Booth. Listen, the secondary might take a big hit if they don't bring back uh, Casey Hayward. And keep in mind, Casey Hayward was coming off like the year before this, the 20, I guess, 20 season. He had a he had a bad season. He had a down year. So this was a big bounce back year. He's an older guy. He's a vet. Can he maintain the level that he that he he? set last year ah that's that's yet to be seen more cornerback depths never the wrong answer you got uh what trayvon mullen there so grabbing booth maybe to be your heir apparent is not a bad idea the arizona cardinals trevon walker listen you got a lot you got more more than just chandler jones hitting free agency at the edge position grabbing a project in Javon Walker who I'm thinking will test out well 
A lot of people expect him to test out well. A lot of people see his high-end traits as a top 10 value. So he could go much higher than this. So I don't mind taking him here. Uh, some people, I've seen some people like, man, you know what? Edge is just a lazy pick for the Cardinals. How, Sway? How? Just because we have Chandler Jones as a free agent. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a big free agent. Because he was your pass rush. Who are you getting some from pass? Who was Russian passer last year? Oh, oh, no one. You might be like, oh, Marcus Golden was fine. Okay, cool. Uh, last time I checked, um, he's a free agent too, I believe. Could be wrong about that. Could be wrong about that. Oh, I got a new patron. That's awesome. Check out the Patreon if you want to see my full big board and rankings. Uh, Dallas Cowboys go Devontae Wyatt. I hear Cowboys fans like, hey, get in a like a nice like a nose tackle, a more of a space eater, and Jordan Davis would be kind of nice, but he's not gonna bring the pass rushing upside that Devontae Wyatt brings. It just it's just the case. I think you get similar similar run stuff and ability, just with someone with a way better pass rush upside, way better. So I like Wyatt. I have him higher than Davis. That just seems to be the case. Uh, Roger McCreary going to the Bills. Not in love with it. Just because there there are going to be questions. Can he stay on the outside? Uh, I mean, hey, they were working him in the slot at the Senior Bowl. I think the NFL sees him probably uh, as a guy that could maybe play both outside slot. Or maybe they see him as a guy that, because of that length, Again, he highlights it here. Short arms, 29 and a quarter inch arms. You only had four guys last year that started on the outside with sub 30 inch arms. And the two best were Dante Jackson and Cameron Sutton. And you could argue those guys are better slot guys anyway. So uh, I guess you could upgrade the slot, but Taron Johns is not bad. Uh, maybe you're, I don't know, man, Kyra Elam, I think might make a little bit more sense. Maybe how, depending on Kyler Gordon, maybe he tests out extremely well. I think he will, but I don't know, man. This is a, this is an interesting spot. Uh, it's interesting. And then the Kobe Dean going to the Titans, as mentioned, yeah, you got Rashawn Evans and John Brown as, Free uh free agents. So grabbing Nicobe Dean's great value, first of all, to pair up with uh David Long. Uh on top of that, you have and to be fair, Nicobe Dean literally forced Monty Rice to be benched. Could see that happen again. Zach Callahan, I really think that dude's getting cut. You ain't paying him 10 million next year. I'm just I'm sorry, you just ain't. Uh there's other ways they could go, especially considering they have no second round pick. But Kobe Dean is real good value at this spot. Uh, Jahan Dotson going to the Bucks, Another pick a lot of people make. But I think with Ali Marpet's recent retirement, Ryan Jensen, now a free agent. Zion Johnson's actually become a very sexy pick to me here for Tampa Bay. Don't be surprised if I start going with that one in the future if he's still on the board. Uh, wow, Kenny Green's still on the board too. What the hell? But the, Dotson makes a ton of sense. Uh, Getting a separator, uh, they, they're going to be without Godwin, potentially AB. Already gone, he said, his deuces in New York. So, yeah. Jermaine Johnson going to the Packers. That'd be fine for a team that could look to move on from both Smith brothers. I know, I know they're not blood related, but they both have the last name Smith. So. Jermaine Johnson be a nice plug and play immediately. And then the Miami Dolphins. Kenyon Green, dude, if he makes it here, I'm all for it. I love Kenyon Green. I think, like here, like it says here, I think he can play tackle. I think he can play guard. He'd be a fine pickup. I love his movement skills. I think Mike McDaniel would too. Kansas City Chiefs, they go Kyer Elam. I really have a hard time believing Elam slips out of the first, but it could happen. Uh, they have Charvarius Ward as a free agent. Um, on top of that, 
you could say maybe this is a Daxton Hill spot with the Honey Badger being a free agent. Uh, you could always upgrade the the pass rush. Melvin Ingram's a free agent. Frank Clark isn't consistent. Legit, he is the J.R. Smith of the NFL. He's streaky, 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 and we're very overpaid. So I think a Boyo, a Boye Mafe could be a guy that maybe like sneaks into the first round with this pick. So Zion Johnson making it to the Bengals, though, that's a pretty darn good pick. I don't think we really need to discuss that one anymore. And then the Detroit Lions, my boy Sam Howell. Y'all know I like Sam Howell. You go check out my quarterback rankings. Uh, I It's basically a love letter to Sam Howell. And I like this because you don't have to start him right away with Jared Goff, but he could challenge Jared Goff immediately. And you could use that year to be like, okay, do we see enough in Sam Howe where we're not really, that we don't have to be in on the 2023 quarterback class? This is your second pick in the first round. It's the last pick of the first round. You get the fifth year option. So going with quarterback makes sense. Swinging for the fences makes sense. I, it just makes sense. So overall, this was a fine mock draft, I think. I think Steve Palazzolo did a good job. Uh, Roger McCreary, I'm a bit indifferent about, but I could see it. Like, I, I, I considered him a first-round prospect until the arm length because, listen, NFL measurables are a thing. Teams take guys off their board because they don't hit a certain requirement, and I'm sure that'll be the same when it comes to McCreary and his length. But I don't think there was any pick I absolutely was appalled by. Uh, like, quarterbacks falling was interesting. Uh, no Kenny Pickett, by the way. Ha! Uh, let's see. I mean, yeah, I think maybe the Trent McDuffie to Atlanta was a little weird, but yeah, I don't know. We'll check out Mel Kuypers tomorrow, but that's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.